When it comes to collecting as a hobby, there's no limit to the things people collect. Of course, there's the top things that are on the board, but everyone has their own passion and everyone has their own way of expressing that. Collecting is one of the ways we do that. It shows dominance and it shows an ownership over something that might otherwise feel out of control. And the last thing we want to do is feel out of control when we collect. All right, so why are we talking about all of this? Well, because if there's a fandom, there's going to be fan websites. And fan websites for action figures can be very powerful indeed. And often misunderstood by both the fan sites themselves and toy companies. So, as someone who's been on both sides of the aisle and has seen characters that fans have demanded on action figure fan sites become a reality, I want to go through some of the misconceptions and conceptions of fan websites. So, first off, are they loved and enjoyed by the toy companies, by the people on the other side of the fan panel? And I can absolutely tell you emphatically, yes, 100%. Toy companies love seeing that people, the customers, are engaged with brands that they're working on and, sh and, and showing love for them. It's like a great story. It's, it's like seeing like something that you love just taken to the next level. Now, granted, the Internet has a way of making everyone's words sometimes louder than they are numerous, but it doesn't mean people don't love hearing people discuss things that they've worked on and put so much love and energy into. It's very rewarding. Now, one of the misconceptions is that a lot of fan sites want to be the one and only official fan site or official fan club, be it for a toy company or a specific line. There's a legal reason why this actually can't happen, why toy companies can't sort of select one site above the others. Favoritism, obviously, being one of the issues that comes up legally. But the other one is the idea of IP and ownership. What if a fan site came up with an idea for a concept that later got made as a toy. Well, with the fan site dubbed official fan site of company, you know, or whatever the title might be, it means that the toy company could be on the hook to pay the fan site for that creation. So that's why everyone is sort of on the equal field. There's no one official fan site for any brand, any company, any toy line. Everyone has an equal say and everyone gets to be a fan site. All right, so I want to talk about some of my favorite things, my favorite things that fan sites do, both as a fan and as a professional. And I showed an image earlier of uh, this guy, Wilro Hood, running through Cloud City. If you recognize him, you know what I'm going for with this. But if you don't, real quickly, he is a uh, extra from Empire Strikes Back. So fans often get to vote for characters they want to see made as toys. And a lot of times this is done officially by toy companies where they'll even label the figures as the fan choice slot. It's a good way to interact with fans, and yeah, I'll be upfront, I've stolen this concept myself and used it on quite a few lines that I've gotten to work on, because it's a great way not only to show that you're working with the fan sites, but to do so in a capacity that can be official. So, talking about Will Ro Hood, he was a extra, as I said, in Empire, and the noise was so large and so long and consistent, and that's key, we're going to get back to that, that eventually an action figure was made of him. He wasn't in a fan choice poll, and he wasn't one of those, you know, part of any program or officially put up. He just came out in the line. Another example is this guy, Bo Sheck. He's also probably just as unrecognizable to anyone who isn't a super Star Wars action figure or Cantina fan. So he's one of the humans from the Star Wars Cantina from Episode Four, A New Hope. 1977. Here's a shot of him next to Chewbacca. He's the one who actually points out to Obi-Wan that he should talk to Chewbacca, because Chewbacca could possibly represent a pilot who could take him off-world. So that's Boshek. He has a couple lines in the radio drama. And he has an action figure. And the reason he has an action figure is because fans also, well before Will Rowe Hood, talked about Boshek a lot. In fact, some of the talk was about how he was so obscure he shouldn't have a figure. All right. So, going through some of my other favorite fan sites and some of the things that they do uniquely, HeMan.org sort of owns He-Man as a fan site. There's not really too many other sites that uh, equal what they have, and they've got great message boards for people who want to engage with other fans of that brand. And I tend to like websites that are one brand specific. Jedi Temple Archives is another one of my favorite sort of go-to stops. 
I like them for quite a few reasons, and mainly it's that they tend to be the one with the newest news, the newest reveals, the newest information about part of my hobby, which is collecting Star Wars action figures, in addition to figures in general. But they're specific to Star Wars. So they tend to, you know, focus on getting news out there to Star Wars action figure collectors. In addition to having the latest news, what I really like is they tend to post, or be one of the first places I've seen posted, when new figures hit retail. So it tends to be a great resource to say, oh, i got to head out and pick something up. And they also create content, and I can't stress this enough how great it is when fan sites create content for the site. They're not just reviewing figures or discussing what's happening in the aisle, but actually creating something as a series. Like in this case, uh, Jedi Temple Archives went through all original Kenner figures from the 80s and talked about whether they had a proper upgrade. Granted, you know, some of the the language can get a little uh, ownership, but the point is they created great content, and that's what matters. Action Figure Insider is another site that's really excelled at this, and one of the reasons I like going there so much is, yeah, they don't just have information, but they have original content, such as when they did an entire uh, detective deep dive into the unmade figures from Super Friends from the Kenner line from the 80s. You can definitely check out the article that first was on their site. Or how they dissected the Kenner Robin Hood Prince of Thieves line and all of the things that it used from different previous lines like the Ewok Village there. It's sort of been well known that Kenner's Robin Hood line used parts from previous lines, but they actually went figure by figure dissecting each piece and figuring out where they came from in a really clever way. And that tends to be what makes some fan sites I would say more enjoyable to not just fans, but also professionals who are going on the sites looking to see what fans are talking about. Have, seeing original content like this and seeing fans you know, really dive deeply into toy lore and history is very encouraging for the toy companies to see this kind of material, that it's not just, oh, you know, we're going to review your, your toy and call it a day. Foosh is another website. I go to this one for my Marvel Legends fix, much like uh, Jedi Temple Archives. And by the way, if I haven't mentioned your specific site in this video, it doesn't mean I don't love that site. I'm just going over a few as examples. And again, one of the things Foosh does is it's got, you know, great articles about what's happening in the industry. But they also, they're like one of the only sites that has a full checklist of upcoming Marvel Legends. And for that reason alone, and it seems like such a simple, stupid thing. But yeah, they keep this list. All right, so what can fan sites do to increase their influence on toy makers? Well, it takes time. It's because of the three-year gap between something happening, content coming out, um, you know, a character being featured in a comic or whatever happens, until you can realistically hope to see that on shelf. Sure, with some smaller toy companies, the time can be cut down, but three years tends to be about the amount of time. So we can have a wish list of figures we want, but it's going to take at minimum three years from publishing that wish list to seeing potential for that figure to even be released. So a perfect example, when I was at Mattel on the DC line, when Blackest Night and Brightest Day came out, which was a huge sort of all DC crossover surrounding the Green Lantern branch of characters, and a lot of the main characters from the DC Hero lineup became Colored Lanterns. Wonder Woman, Flash, even Lex Luthor got in on there. So we did a toy wave based on this series of all the different Colored Lanterns, but it took almost two and a half, three years to come out, and by then, Black as Night was yesterday's news. It wasn't interesting anymore. And so this wave tended to be the one people looked at as when the whole line jumped the shark. But really, it was us trying to deliver something fans were asking for, but it's a perfect illustration of needing to be consistent, but also being patient. Because it takes toy companies a long time to get to a request just because of the timeline. But if you are consistent and you are patient, you'll see dream projects come out. And we've seen this a lot over the past few years. Not just from the two big companies, but a lot of smaller ones too. So... Don't be all over the map with your requests. Zero in on a specific character, a specific, a specific, I could talk today, a specific vehicle, and stay the course. Stay with your candidate. And be loud, be consistent, and be patient. And ideally, it may take a few years, but if you're consistent with that, you can see a figure 
updated. Let's not leave Spot with this as his only action figure. It's a crime against toys. So everyone consistently, for the next three years, we're all going to ask for Spot in Marvel Legends. Got it? All right. Everyone's dismissed. Hey, but if you like this video, do share it with others. It's the best way to show support and help the channel grow. Thanks for watching. I will check you out in the comment section and uh, see you in the next video.